Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Tats Deej. Today I'm going to get in and talk Captain America Civil War. I've seen it twice. The movie's been out for two weeks now. If you haven't seen it, the first thing I'm going to tell you is get your ass to the theater and watch this film. Captain America Civil War is the movie loosely based on the 2007 graphic novel of the same name. And I say loosely based because if you're going to this theater expecting a scene-by-scene, panel-by-panel -panel recreation of the book to the movie, you're going to be sorely disappointed. I will say this much about it. The spirit of the graphic novel storyline is in there, if not the exact story in and of itself. And some of that centers around the fact that there's just a licensing issue with a lot of the characters. There were key players in the graphic novel who weren't able to be in the movie for very obvious licensing reasons with different studios and things like that. I'm going to go on record as saying this stands out right now in my top three favorite Marvel movies. I'm still sticking with number one being Winter Soldier, number two being Guardians of the Galaxy, but Civil War stands out as a very, very narrowly thin margin number three. I thought it was a fantastically crafted film. If I had to make any argument about the movie at all and say anything negative, I would say at two and a half hours it's a bit long. There's a couple spots in there where it kind of plods along with the story. They're building towards something it's all necessary so I won't complain about it too much um, as far as the creative direction where the movie went um, they make you know a, a good effort to build a story similar to the graphic novel but not completely copy the graphic novel panel for panel in and of the sense that you know Captain America feels very strongly Steve Rogers feels very strongly about his values towards the the topic of should the government control the people with the superpowers, should they control the Avengers, and, you know, Tony Stark, just through happenstance and different things in the movie that have affected him personally, he feels like there should be a measure of control, they should be kept in check, and they should be held accountable. And the beauty of the movie is that it never asks you, the viewer, to pick a side. There is no real, while there is a villain in the movie, the there's no villain surrounding the main theme of the movie, which is hero versus hero over a particular political argument, as well as, to a certain degree, it becomes quite personal for uh, Iron Man and for Captain America. And I won't spoil too much of the movie by telling you too much and giving it away here. A um, couple key points. Uh, Robert Downey Jr. and Chris Evans both, as usual, own their characters. I was really glad to see Robert Downey Jr. commit to doing this one. Um, they're kind of... There's some rumor going around he may do an Iron Man 4. If he does not, I would gladly accept his role in Civil War as, an, an, as a de facto Iron Man 4. Um, holds the story together. It's very necessary to the story. A couple of really big things that I enjoyed were the introduction of Chadwick Boseman as Black Panther and Tom Holland as Spider-Man. And the second one I'll get to in just a minute. Chadwick Boseman really owned this character. And for me, he was one of the highlights of the film. I'll go on record as saying I, two years ago, would not have been interested either way in a, a, a Black Panther movie. Not that I really had a problem with the character. But to me, he didn't scream marketability. He didn't scream a huge... There wasn't a huge interest for me in that. Marvel, and this is where they succeed, gets me emotionally invested in these characters, much like they did with Guardians of the Galaxy, which I took a huge dump all over when they first announced it. And same thing with Ant-Man. I had zero interest in watching an Ant-Man movie until Ant-Man came out, and I thought Paul Rudd totally nailed it. In the same vein... Chadwick Boseman nails this role, and he makes me want to see more, and I could not be looking more forward to a standalone Black Panther film, because for me, the guy was easily in the top two highlights of the whole movie. Moving forward to Tom Holland again, they introduced Spider-Man and are trying to salvage the whole Spider-Man property from that train wreck that was Sony, and I will say this about his portrayal of Spider-Man, the way they used him as Spider-Man and the way they used him as Peter Parker and introduced him to the film. Brilliantly done. They didn't beat you over the head with origin story. They're like, hey, this is Spider-Man. Here he is. You know who he is. You know where he's from. You know what he does. Whammo. There he is. He's in the story. You don't need to know all the rest because you already know it. His portrayal, personally, I think they did more with this kid in Civil War in 20 minutes than Mark Webb was able to do in the Amazing Spider-Man movies through two consecutive films. And that's just the direction creatively that the film went, in and of the fact that I just didn't particularly care for Andrew Garfield as Peter Parker or Spider-Man. Plus, I just didn't want another origin story. Here in Civil War, they keep it tight, they keep it small, they introduce him, he does his thing, and bam! 
For me, I'm excited for a standalone Spider-Man film, and I'm looking forward to this kid's future as Spider-Man, as well as glad as hell to have Spider-Man back in the fold, away from Sony, and home at Marvel, where he belongs, where I think they'll do the character some justice. A couple key things a point. Like I said, the movie was a little bit long. There was some necessary story in there that I like because they can branch off of this moving forward into what will eventually become Infinity War Part 1 and Part 2, as well as giving some of the more smaller characters, Vision, Scarlet Witch, people like that, more to do in future endeavors. And the nice thing about the fact that they had so many heroes in this movie was that it didn't become like X-Men 3 where you felt like it was bloated. I felt like everybody's timing was necessary. I felt like the amount of time they were in the film was very, very necessary. I thought it was adequate and I thought it was appropriate. So for me, I they hit it out of the park again. Marvel, another huge hit. I'm giving this one five and a half beers on a six pack. Like I said, if you haven't gone, if you haven't seen it, Get your ass out there and see it. If you have seen it, go out and see it again because there's things you're going to catch the second time around that you did in the first, as with any movie like that. I'm Tad Steeds. That's my Captain America Civil War movie review. I'm out.